It's been years. I just can't get rid of you, can I? Hello, my lovelies. Did you miss me? Hmm. Who do I want to be today? Head to the command deck. Adventurer. Sound check. One, two, three. Are we are we on? Can you hear me? Okay, okay, hold on. A buzz of excitement has settled over New Jersey and Heroes Park as we count down the hours to the AIM experience. CEO Dr. George Tarleton has promised nothing short of a revolutionary announcement as the organization prepares to unveil their latest suite of technology including their cutting-edge Adaptoid AI. After five years, AIM shows no sign of slowing down. If I can editorialize for a moment, as one who covered the emergence of the Age of Heroes and the sense of hope and excitement that followed, this feels similar, but even more inspiring because it's normal human ingenuity creating the technological renaissance that continues to change the way we live. It's hard to believe that five years ago, the nation mourned one of its shining cities. We've come a long way. And in this reporter's opinion, it's an exciting time to be alive. sold here. And so it was destined for you to spend nothing. Agent Romanov. How are they doing? Recovering. They've been through a lot. Thank you for finding them. Let me know if you need anything. You look like you're getting stronger. That prison took a lot out of me. But I'll be ready to join the fight soon. Thanks again. For... Well, everything. You've helped me more than you know, Kamala. Where are we with security? It's a mess. We're working hard to get the grid rewired again. Hello, Avenger. Ready for the new you? Let me know if something screams you, and I'll ring it up. Not to your taste? I'll work on it. I have goods for your gold, if you're able.
And people say I like to change costumes. Cleared for landing. I can't believe you're not here. We could really use you right now, Cap. Wanna go do some good? Here's the info we have. Hopefully it's enough. Yes, you gave us an upper hand against Aim. How's progress on the consoles? Huh. It's a rudimentary. It's enough for us to run operations. Three, what's your status? Okay, Tony. We need to show the world what AIM's been up to. And I've got the perfect opportunity. The AIM experience in Manhattan. The media launch for Charlton's new adaptoids. Every network will be there. I think it would be a perfect place for a few dozen missing inhumans to suddenly reappear. We have to be careful, though. AIM will bury the truth and kill any remaining prisoners rather than risk exposure. We'll need the location of their lab so we can lock it down. Good thing you captured Tarleton's second in command. If someone can get her to slip, it'll be Bruce. He's already volunteered. Not bad, Tony. Head on down to the interrogation room. I'll let Bruce know he's on deck. Miss Romanoff, Dr. Pym would like a word with you at the war table at your earliest convenience. Yep, this one's definitely out of commission. We'll need tech to take it apart. I'll have to put in a request first. Greetings from the anthill. Natasha, thanks for helping save the day back at Ames Prison, and for everything you did as Tiny Dancer. I wonder who our mysterious guardian angel was? Anytime, Hank. Sometimes dirty hands do the best work. True. And how the hell did you folks get the Chimera online, let alone airborne, without Terrigen? 
The Chimera has the same standard engines as older helicarriers. She's kind of like a hybrid car. But, you know, cool. Something tells me this isn't just a thank you call, Doctor. Guilty as charged. We did a little digging in the data you sent me from the prison. AIM was able to successfully transport most of the Inhumans. I've tracked the ship, but we'll need someone to go in after it. We'll do whatever we can. Thanks. I've already uploaded some mission details to your war table. Pam out. Miss Romanoff, welcome back to the Chimera. I have intel on the potential AIM defectors that you transmitted to me during your time as Tiny Dancer. I've marked a location on the war table that should be of interest to you. Thanks, Jarvis. It's good to have you handling mission details for me again. Just like old times, as they say. Six two three. Access logs for the past two weeks. Okay, Commander. Are my defectors on site? Exactly as you predicted. I've been monitoring the AIM laboratory you identified in the Utah Badlands. The scientists were transferred there this morning. Why do I feel left out right now? Try to keep up, Tony. Sure. If you let me in on your secret super spy plan. Widow's been in contact with a group of scientists inside AIM. They want to defect to the Resistance. Then it's a rescue op. Nice. These are some smart folks. Maybe even smarter than you. We could use their brains on our side. I'll take point, but be ready to send in some backup when I holler.
How much contact have you had with these guys? As Tiny Dancer, plenty. Once my cover was blown and I lost access to my company email. Encouraging defections right under Ames nose. Nice. The goal is to knock out Ames' power junction in the area, giving the scientists the blackout they need to go AWOL. And these scientists have something to do with A-Day? They worked in Tarleton's lab, the one that discovered Terrigen in the bay. I imagine that guilt is what made them want to defect. to the facility housing the power junction soon. The blackout will delay reinforcements, but not if they already know you're coming. Okay, there's the junction facility. To get inside, you'll need a bit of help from Jarvis. Miss Romanoff, this facility is locked down with local security protocols. To disable the door, I will need to use your transponder within proximity of a network node. Get close, let you do your thing. Got it. It's important that you stay close to the node and keep aim forces away. They will attempt to block me. Neither do I. to destroy the power station.
Work your magic. You're safe now. Dr. Forson, do you read? I'm about to give you your distraction. We read you, Widow! What's your status? Nervous, but we'll move as soon as you get Ames' attention. Get ready to hit the gas. Destroying all four turbines will take down that power junction and should get Ames' attention. Hill, as soon as I do this, the whole base is gonna fall on my head. Track the jet. We focus on staying alive.
are you clear? They're not responding. Get topside. are converging on the projected crash site. Still got it. Be taking prisoner. Aim's all over them. Not for long. Save us, please! Aim won't be taking prisoners.
quite go as we planned. It never does. Now, Jarvis, did my payment come in? A sizable transfer has just arrived. For a payout? Take a deep breath, Commander. I'll explain when I can. You better explain when you get back here. Then allow me to take the scenic route. You have been selected to work with extremely confidential data on the basis of your intellect and abilities. New personnel at the Terrigen Initiative are expected to be familiar with all prior findings with regard to the experimental regenerative Terrigen hemoglobin catalyst formula, henceforth the regenerative formula. The company Internet has an archive of all previous research. The applications will become clear but for the purposes of security and shareholder obligations, we filter our results. The primary goal must always appear to be the complete cure of the inhuman condition through use of the formula, even if your work takes you in another, more important direction. We at AIM have certain expectations of you. Failure to live up to expectations at this stage puts you in a dangerous position, operationally speaking. 
You have all been through rigorous vetting. We are working with arguably the most important discovery in the history of scientific inquiry. Do not disappoint. Although we must always acknowledge the loss of human life on A-Day, we have been given an unprecedented opportunity, a large-scale human trial on the effects of exposure to Terrigen. Terrigen has an immediate reaction to water, creating a fine particulate mist. For a fraction of human subjects, this Terrigen mist has a profound transformative effect. We have since isolated a mitochondrial DNA shared by this subgroup. Thus far, only those we have dubbed in human, have entered pterogenesis upon exposure. A closer examination of inhumans is underway, but the early reports are both fascinating and distressing. The genetic distinction in question arise identically from multiple geographically diverse populations. I've tightened the security on these reports, but it seems almost inescapable. At some point in the past, someone or something did this to us on purpose. Our understanding of pterogenesis continues to increase with certain commonalities being identified. All inhuman subjects form a protective cocoon around their bodies during the process. Though the structure is more akin to a chrysalis, I'm afraid the catchier name has stuck. The gestation period varies wildly and the mortality rate is still high but surviving subjects emerge changed, and from there, no two metamorphoses are identical. There also appears to be a psychosomatic component to the mutations, a connection between the consciousness of the subject and the change. Work with the regenerative formula on Project Adaptoid advances in parallel with great strides being made in the mimicry of inhuman abilities. That research group must remain isolated from the rest and away from any diagnostic equipment that would allow study of the regenerative formula itself. This level of secrecy is prohibitive to progress, but the composition of the formula must remain known to me alone. The inhuman death rate is concerning, but more worrying is the apparent correlation between the subject's desires and their individual manifestation post pterogenesis The more a subject is aware of the program and its risks, the more likely their enhancements will assist them in escape or resistance. We must be cautious. Keeping subjects isolated and ill-informed is the smartest approach. It's also becoming difficult to keep George unaware of the regenerative formula's importance in our research or in his own treatment. Without it, his condition would be terminal. But the formula allows me to direct the course of his transformation, and he remains my most important subject. He would kill me if he learned the truth. So many little calculated risks, but nothing else matters besides the work. We're on the event horizon of nothing less than total human evolutionary apotheosis or extinction. Someone has to be the adult in the room and make the hard choices. AIM has scraped together enough vibranium to continue research into quantum causality for now. If the implications of our early tests are correct, we may be rewriting the common conception of linear time before the decade is out, but we will soon need a new supply. I've made initial overtures to the Condon government now that I am in a position to do so, but I don't believe it will amount to much. We will need far more than they will part with, willingly. Tarleton continues to act like my prominence in public life is something I desired, not something I endure. Before A-Day, I mirrored his resentment at being sidelined by Tony and the Avengers. I let that be our bond, a false longing for credit and fame. As if I didn't manufacture the situation to position myself exactly where I wanted to be. People are always willing to believe that you share the same desires. From there, it's all momentum and inertia. 
a gentle push here, a single word there. Then you let them do the work and think it was their idea all along. People can be so easy. I have enough of a foundation in psychiatry and human behavior to diagnose and categorize my own particular mental illnesses and pathology. I am not deluded. I know that chemistry can render my mind suboptimal and that I must take responsibility for maintenance. Once, to eliminate the possibility of confirmation bias, I hired the best psychologist I could find and allowed unfettered access. I could tell she was horrified, but she hid it well. It was a waste. She refused to believe that I was not made who I am by trauma. She needed so badly for there to be some answer, a clear causation to my need to control, a reaction to a stimulus. The real answer, of course, scared her too much to consider. I'm a shadow without a light source. Trauma didn't make me. I made me. In my position, with my resources and abilities, how could I not do what I have done? It would be an abdication of my responsibility to my species not to. I had her killed afterwards, like I had always intended. I avoid intoxication. Social situations demand that I sometimes put on a show, but I am not in the habit of relinquishing control without getting something in return. That's out the window tonight. Just received the final report from the archaeology teams. Every geographic site we've linked to inhuman origins shows the same signs. Unmistakably extraterrestrial. This changes things. If they've been here once. I've opened a bottle, locked the doors, and blacked out the security system long enough for me to sink into oblivion for an evening. I deserve it. I am so lonely. I don't need something so trite or squalid as companionship. What I need is the one thing I cannot have. Someone I can depend on. I'm so tired of doing this alone. I just need there to be more of me. I don't blame the rest of them for resisting what AIM must do. Not everyone can see what's coming. If they understood what I was doing and why, they would try to worship me. But no, they must be dragged kicking and screaming into salvation. I accept that 